Have you ever wondered if the best teams from years gone by could do it today? Could they still play and compete in this modern era of football? Because today I've downloaded and installed a mod that lets you play with classic retro teams from years gone by. Whether they've won the treble or have iconic players on their roster, they're in the game. Think of the best ever players to put on your club's jersey, they're in the team. For example, Newcastle United. They've got Craig Bellamy and Shearer leading the line with prime baller Hatton Benafa right behind them. Take a look at United now and it's all the icons, it's all the legends and favourites. Skulls and Bobby Charlton in midfield, David Beckham on the right, Van Nistelrooy and Rooney up top. Who could forget Vidic and Ferdinand? This team pretty much made me fall in love with football, not gonna lie. And even the bench is stacked. You've got George Best, Cantona. This mod has just combined the best players from eras and years gone by. Liverpool are lining up with the likes of Torres returning, Ian Rush up front, Gerard and Xabi Alonso in midfield, which of course means Messi's back on Barcelona and Cristiano Ronaldo has returned to Real Madrid in a prime outfit. In fact, Real Madrid are so good that they have both Ronaldos, R9 and CR7, back playing for the club and don't even get me started on their bench. When you talk about European pedigree, the Rossoneri know how to serve up quality. All the old retro logos and retro kits are in the game. Basically, we're putting them all into career mode, letting them cook, simulating through the years to see what goes down, who wins all the major trophies and awards, who wins the Ballon d'Or, who become the best players, who gets promoted and relegated, all that good stuff. And today I'll be taking over my boys Frosinone because we're not good enough to have a retro team. We'll be watching from the sidelines with great interest and just viewing things from afar. Now this squad file and mod also applies to national teams too. So you already know where we'll be checking Euros, World Cups and every other international tournament you can think of. There are just names and nostalgia bait in every single squad you look at. Don't even get me started on this Italy 06 squad. We could get lost for hours and get carried away here, but let's just get on with the rest of the video. We don't want to have any impact upon the simulation whatsoever, so let's get things underway and kickstart season one. Now the question on everyone's mind in this first season is who wins the Ballon d'Or? Is it going to be the same old players up for the award? And no, we have got some fresh new faces, or familiar however you want to look at it, but we've got a fresh new crop of nominees, and we've got the likes of R9 Ronaldo, Di Stefano, and the two Dutch goats from Milan, Van Basten and Hullet. And the winner of this first Ballon d'Or in the video has got to be one man and one man only. R9 Ronaldo takes it home at 20 years of age. Kicking it at Real Madrid in his prime, what more could you ask for? With a market value of 196 million, he takes home Ballon d'Or number one. Look at this guy, Juan Uloa. He wasn't even around when colour was invented. Bro is built in black and white. Obviously, it's going to take some time for the entire footballing world to adjust to pretty much regaining all the best players but we'll take a look at the transfers that have gone down so far this season and the most expensive have just been the modern day transfers. The most spent has been 21.9 million. For the time being, there have been no major money moves going down. It was Bayern Munich to win the Champions League on penalties against Juventus. Their retro squad ended up winning 5-4 from the spot. And now over in the Europa League, it was a prime Barcelona squad to lose out against Ferencvaros or whatever that Hungarian team is. 3-1 in the big dance like what yeah this might explain a few things as we've got the access to their roster they've got some ballers on their team florian albert some players from like the 50s the 60s they are from like the golden age of hungarian football it's still crazy though to think that this team beat a prime icon barcelona look at Bayern though european champs for a reason they have some club legends from years gone by gerd muller he had the original goal scoring record in the calendar year before messi broke it in 2012 do you already know he's going to tear it up in this simulation alongside Miroslav Klose and a 20 year old Iron Robin. It's borderline illegal to have all these ballers and legends in the one team but hey the mod's making it possible. Oh boy they haven't done him any favours with that game face scan though. Bastion Sveinsteiger yeah okay this team are going to dominate in Europe. You're mixing some of their club legends with the all time greats in their prime. All the errors are combining and it's just beautiful to see. And if you guys want to try out this mod yourselves at home make sure to check the link down in the description. If you go on to enjoy, drop the video a like down below. What other mods and crazy experiment simulations do you want to see on the channel next? Make sure to leave your suggestions in the comments below. Sometimes in life, things never change. As we flick over to the Premier League and it's an OG retro Man City squad who take it home. They become champions, United are runners-up, and the retro invincible Arsenal following in the footsteps of teams gone by fourth. Over in League 1, yeah, things have stayed the same. PSG have taken home the Farmers League with 83 points. Monaco
Monaco and Olympic Marseille though challenging them. The Champions League winners, you already know, they've completely strolled the Bundesliga. With 87 points, one loss all season, Dortmund down in fourth, and that could only really be one winner in Serie A. You'd think it would be Milan, but no. Juventus have a comfortable ride to the top. 89 points, Inter runners up with 81, and the Ballon d'Or winner couldn't help Real Madrid overcome Barcelona in the league as they both scored 116 goals. Real Madrid let one more goal pass, and that ended up having some devastating results as the Blaugrana came out on top with 90 points, Spanish champions. That's been season one, and I'm sure there are some more weird and wacky results on the way. But let's get simulating because season two of these retro teams in the modern era is up next. There's been more money spent this time around. In this economy, we've got Domenico Berardi headed off to West Ham for 46.8 million pounds. I don't know what it is about them, but there's something about these retro logos that just penetrate your soul. As we have Fabiano Parisi headed off to Chelsea for 21.5 million and Tales Magno is moving to Boca Juniors. Now let's see who's up for the award, the 2023 Ballon d'Or, and you can start to see some of the most successful teams in the sim have their players nominated like Roberto Baggio for Juve, Jordan Muller fresh off winning the Champions League. Both of Barcelona's Rivaldo and Stoichkov fresh off their La Liga victory. We're going to have a new Ballon d'Or winner, that's for sure. And it's the man himself, Jörg Muller, who's come back from the dead to steal the golden ball off the likes of Haaland and Mbappe. It's now his time to shine and he's proving to the world that he can in fact do it in the modern era. You just know the Bavarians are in for a big video when their entire midfield are nominated for the team of the year. I should have checked this last season, but it's too late now as Louis van Gaal has won the Manager of the Year award. You know we're in some strange times when this guy has beaten Pep Guardiola to that award. And we had a sneak peek of them earlier, but it's the team of the year and look who it is. It's pretty much the entire Bayern Munich starting 11. They are slowly starting to take over this entire video. And I can confirm there are actually three players not from Bayern. That includes Buyo at Barcelona, Messi at Barcelona and Rivaldo. Other than that, a Louis van Gaal led Bayern Munich are set to dominate this entire simulation. And for good reason too, they're a five-star outfit easily with 91 attack, 92 midfield and 91 defense. They're gonna take some stopping. As we have two more expensive transfers including Vincenzo Grifo. What's with it with all these Italians making moves? He's departing to Lille for 34.3 million and the Hungarian left back Milos Kerkez moves to Chelsea for 20.6. It doesn't matter what the football climate is or who's in Chelsea's team, Todd Bowley will spend money despite Drogba, Lampard, Zola, SCN, Pettit check Terry or returning to the team. Don't ask me why, but they're the biggest spenders of the video so far. I don't even think we should have doubted them because just like Drizzy, they've gone back to back by and take home the Champions League again and Louis van Gaal is working his magic. You already know what's about to go down. The Euros 2024 is this summer, but more on that later as Juventus failed to get revenge for losing the Champions League last season. Bayern only need regular time to win 2-1 in the big dance. They made sure to stamp their authority on the Way for Super Cup 2, taking it home against that Hungarian powerhouse 1 0. The God of Naples returned to the city and he's starting to deliver some silverware as Napoli defeated Raul Sociedad 2 0 in the Europa. And another German team out for blood, it's RB Leipzig, taking down Celtic 2 1 in the Conference League. Over in the Premier League, it was actually Tottenham to win the. What? Okay, now this is starting to get into crazy territory. With 85 points, Man City, the champions, down in 10th from 1st to 10th. That is like Leicester levels activity. The more we simulate, the more these results get crazier as it's Middlesbrough to finish rock bottom with that retro logo alongside Crystal Palace and Bournemouth. Over in League 1, yeah, the only challenger to PSG really is Nantes up in second place. It's only taken the Parisian 78 points to win the league and Leverkusen overthrow the dominant Bayern Munich. Maybe they were just focusing all on the Champions League. What is going down as it was a three horse title race up until the last day. I never thought I'd see the day where Bayern would get dethroned with the squad that they have, that is a complete failure. Juventus lost the Champions League final, they came through in second and in Serie A, it is Milan to reclaim their throne on top with all their legends. Inter coming through in third as Feyenoord beat out Ajax in the Eredivisie. Over in La Liga, we've had a bit of a shake-up with Villarreal taking home the silverware becoming champions. Another close three-horse title race that went down to the last day. And look at that, every team in the top eight scored more than 100 goals. And down in 20th, rock bottom, it's Las Palmas conceding a 
116 all season. 2024 Euros, we've got Hungary who have qualified. They've been drawn into Group A alongside Russia, Spain and Portugal. Germany, Netherlands, Czech Republic and Romania make up Group B. Group C has that famous Greek side, Sweden, Belgium and France. Meanwhile, Group D has Wales, Ireland, Scotland and Italy. We watched this final play out, but it's turned out to be Germany versus Sweden in the Euro 2024 final, making it out of the groups. It was Russia and Spain in Group A. Hungary finishing rock bottom. We've got the Netherlands coming through in first. Germany came in second, just like their finals opponent, Sweden in Group C. Belgium came through top. Italy topped their group. And over in the quarters, it was a 5-4 win for Sweden against Italy. What is going down? Netherlands won against Spain on penalties. Germany beat out Belgium 1-0 to make it through to the final. And how the hell did Sweden knock out the Netherlands? This is how Germany are lining up for the final. That 2014 retro kit that they won the World Cup in. They've got a Ballon d'Or winner leading them out. Matthias and Effenberg. Beckenbauer at the back. Oliver Kahn in between the sticks. It's pretty much all a Bayern Munich squad. And how did Rudiger fraud his way into this Germany national team? Bremer, who I remember from FIFA 14. Sorry, I probably wasn't even born when like 90% of these players were playing. Nevertheless, they go out to battle tonight. Heavy favourites versus a Sweden team who the only player I recognise is Freddy Lundberg on the right. No Zlatan, no Larsen. And the referee is Howard Webb. Oh my goodness me. Let's go ahead and simulate this one. And it ended up being much closer than I thought. A 3-2 aggregate win. Zlatan came on in the 75th minute. But Muller with the winning goal in the 84th. Jürgen Klinsmann netted himself a brace. And a past and present Germany become your 2024 Euros champions. Slayer of the tournament ended up being Russia's Yashin. Okay, the famous goalkeeper with the hat. He also won the keeper of the tournament, of course. With the top goal scorer of the tournament reigning from the Czech Republic. It's this guy, the center forward, Aldrich Nejedali. Again, another one of these legends in black and white. I just got no clue who he is. But in three appearances, managed to score four times. And up there with him is the likes of Nordal from Sweden, whose goals got them all the way to the final. Klinsmann only got one appearance in that final and scored two. Jörg Muller only got himself two as well. That's enough about the Euros. That's enough international football for now. Let's get on with season three's transfers. That's just the world we're living in now in this alternate dimension. Finally, we have some major money, some big cash being thrown around and the clubs are out here spending with Real Madrid forking out 146.9 million for a 21 year old Laurent Blanc. One of the world's best center backs alongside this guy, Ferenc Dijk. 21 year old Hungarian moves to Borussia Dortmund for 140 million. Gordon Strachan moves to Valencia for 130.6 million pounds. Where's all this money coming from? To be honest with you, I'm not going to pretend to have the ball knowledge to know who these players are. I'm sure your Hungarian football enthusiasts will know all about Gulia Laurent. He's made an exciting big money move to Aston Villa for 99.5 million. And the most expensive modern day player who's made a move is Kingsley Coman, who changes allegiances to Spurs, the Premier League winners, for 97.2 million. Oh my goodness, we've got a 21 year old Damien Duff moving to Aston Villa for 87.7 million pounds. Yeah, this, this is getting crazy. We've got a United cult hero, Antonio Valencia. He now switches to Brighton for 86.4 million pounds. From no spending at all in these first two seasons to clubs going absolutely wild. With borderline billions being spent this summer, I wonder how that's going to impact this upcoming Ballon d'Or. After the German dominance on both the club and international level, we're going to take a look at the Ballon d'Ors and there have been no Germans nominated. Mbappe in the mix, Van Nistelrooy, Hullet and Van Basten. A mix of superstars past and present. Now is Mbappe going to rise against all the odds and take it away from an icon? And no. It's fun to see, it's good to see that we've had a different Ballon d'Or winner every single year and now it's Ruud van Nistelrooy from Manchester United who is one of the world's best strikers at 22. The Flying Dutchman will take home the 2024 Ballon d'Or and for good reason. And the UEFA Team of the Year for 2024 has been announced. This time instead of only Barca and Bayern being represented, it's only United and Milan. We've got Smeichel in net, Maldini, Ferdinand, Baresi at the back, Gary Neville's in there, Ballon d'Or winner Van Nistelrooy and Van Basten also make the list. The entire Manchester United midfield. I'm seeing the signs. This could be the rise of a new dynasty and a new era of dominance. Like, they just have depth and world-class quality for days in every single department. Anderson, what are you doing here? The nostalgia, the retro vibes. Oh, this United squad, man. It is incredible. And they still find the need to go out and sign Alejandro Balde, Incapier, Batty Achille. They've decided to sign, like, 15 new centre-backs. Antonio Silva, Kalulu, Lukueba. Meanwhile, they only have two first-team keepers. Yeah, the career mode AI needs a complete overhaul.
level. The transfers have gone up a level. Look at the money being spent. We have a new world record transfer fee. 204 million pounds being spent on a center back. As Inter poach Ronald Koeman from Barcelona. As we have Gaetano Skiria, another first team defender, moving to Dortmund for 173 million. And AC Milan splashed out on Ryan Giggs. Weakening United ever so slightly, spending 171.7 million pounds. Have you Zanetti moves to Chelsea for again these nine figure fees. They've been thrown out ever so casually as Alessandro Nesta makes his big money move to Real Madrid for 165 million. And we've got players I've never even heard of before. Zeroberto, he's been purchased by Milan. And you can see the most expensive summer signing of Laurent Blanc. See how far down he ranks now that January's passed. The money that these teams have in this simulation is getting scary. Jamie Carragher leaves his boyhood club of Liverpool as he makes the switch to Italy, Napoli with a 106 million pound bid. I'm starting to run out of words. This simulation has just drop kicked realism out the window. It's getting to that stage of the sim where you're starting to see some weird teams qualify for the Champions League like Anothoris Famagusta. They had a rough time over in Group B. You've got the likes of Levski and FC Nantes. Now that's besides the point as that team of the year worthy United failed to reach the Champions League final. They were knocked out to Borussia Mönchengladbach with Juventus now three years running have made the big dance. And it's about damn time that the old lady, the Bianconeri, take home the Champions League for the first time since the 90s. They've only had to have some of their best players of all time return to the team as they defeated the Germans 2-1 in a nail-biting final. We had the Europa League winners Olympic Lyon beat out PSV slightly 1-0 and Hadjik split the Croatian outfit beating Shakhtar Donetsk after it was 3-3 on penalties 5-4. The conference was an absolute madness over in the UEFA for Super Cup, it was Bayern Munich to win out in a five-goal thriller versus Napoli, the Europa League winners of season two, three-two. Here's the Juventus outfit with legends upon legends. The captain Fabio Cannavaro in the mix, the only defender to ever win the Ballon d'Or. Del Piero and Baggio up top make a clinical duo. Nedved out on the left, Platini in midfield, Deschamps, Edgar Davids with the iconic goggles. You've got a young Antonio Conte on the bench. Yeah, for those who didn't know, he was a player back in the day. His hairline was a little bit more intense in his playing career. Cabrini, Trezeguet on the bench. They are just absolutely stacked. Look how many options they have and the, the team they can choose from. That three-man defense is basically just a wall. With the OG kit, the retro logos, they are looking right up there alongside United and Bayern. And prayers up for the recently retired Gigi Buffon, who's rocking the famous headband. The big question, though, is Edgar Davids wearing the goggles? And of course he is. He won't even take them off in transfer negotiations. He stays strapped with the goggles and he means business. You've got to love the attention to detail. Even Conte's hairline has made a returning game. I'd love to check out Inter's team because even with that mega star lineup, they finished Bridesmaids in Serie A. Second to Inter with 84 points. They come out on top champions. Milan and Napoli make up the top four. Over in the Premier League, it's actually Liverpool to reign supreme. Again, United come through in second. Meanwhile, it's Arsenal and Aston Villa to make up the top four. Chelsea, with all that money being spent, still can't crack the Champions League spot. As Tottenham have gone from champions to seventh. And over getting relegated is Bournemouth, Fulham, and Brentford all going back down to the championship. Over in League 1, we have different winners. Okay, Marseille starting to show their dominance with 84 points, beating up PSG and Monaco to the title. Bayern Munich weren't going to let their crown slip for too long as the Bavarians come through the Bundesliga title with 79 points. Dortmund coming through runners up. And one of the most interesting leagues that has unfolded so far in this sim it's La Liga as Real Madrid. For the first time in the simulation have come through on top with R9 Ronaldo and the gang. They were just too good for Barcelona sitting in second with 86 and Sevilla up there in third with 85 points. Fast forward into the future. Summer's 2025 transfer market has slammed shut. The window is closed and these were the top deals. We've got some high profile moves to showcase and the transfer fee record has been broken again. This time by none other than Todd Bowley's Chelsea with Frank Puskas making the switch to Stamford Bridge from Real Madrid. The two 234.7 million pounds, just crazy numbers. Inter haven't let up after winning the Scudetto with a purchase of Raul from Real Madrid for 214 million. Real Madrid are just selling their superstars for fun as Fakete has moved to Bayern Munich from Inter. And Frank Ribéry for 184 million pounds will be playing in the Premier League at 22. He's now moved to Old Trafford. Juventus pick up a prime Sergio Ramos to add to their already stacked defense for 180 mil. A Euro 2024 champion, Effenberg switches over to Juventus. Didier 
Deschamps moves from Juve to Real Madrid. West Ham pick up Bastian Feinsteiger for 168.9 million pounds. We've got Cafu moving to Borussia Dortmund. Eden Hazard in a weird turn of events has been sold from Chelsea this time to Aston Villa for 155. Rafael Leal moves to Liverpool. We've got John Barnes who will now be playing out at the Camp Nou with Barcelona. As Nemanja Vidic departs United instead of moving to Inter, he's now playing for the Italian champions for 145.8 million pounds. With Chiellini moving to Sevilla, I mean these transfers they just keep going and going and going. For nine figures plus they just never end. It is just the list that keeps on giving with Gerard Piquet the leads. Probably the strangest move out of the lot. The total spend of this transfer window from all of Europe is probably in the billions. And this is the furthest I can scroll down. The cheapest transfer of the window is Ramirez to Hoffenheim for 78 million pounds. That is nothing in today's market. Here's some food for thought. When it comes to the Ballon d'Or in 2025, we've still got Prime Ronaldo and Messi still balling out in Spain, both 95 overall. You'd think a Ballon d'Or win or heck, even a nomination is up for them soon. It's that time of the year again. 2025 Ballon d'Or nominees are here and the top four include R9 Ronaldo, Jerd Muller. Both of them have won it before. Now up against two new contenders in De Stefano and Ian Rush. And it's everyone's favorite Brazilian R9 Ronaldo to retain the Ballon d'Or. He's taken only second of the simulation so far. Now it's time for the UEFA Team of the Year in 2025 and it's basically the entire Real Madrid squad. What we can take a look at and analyze though are the biggest and best January transfers. Who's been the most expensive? It was indeed Paul Scholes. Okay, the Englishman has come through. However, United have replaced him with a prime Andrea Siniesta, the Spanish World Cup winner at Barca for 200 million pounds. Yeah, fair. That's a decent replacement. Patrick Vieira has ditched the Arsenal Invincibles for Inter as they've splashed 181.7 million. And Fabio Cannavaro has won the Champions League with Juventus. He's had enough. Keep in mind, we are in a World Cup year. 2026 is on the line and I feel like slowly, slowly each big club is starting to get their time to shine in this video. With the Champions League final this year being Liverpool versus Benfica. The Reds took down Bayern Munich 4-2 in the semis who were previous winners. Benfica progressing past a very strong Milan 3-2 on aggregate. Look away Arsenal fans because they finished rock bottom of Group D. Aston Villa are in the Champions League and Napoli didn't qualify out the groups. Yeah, they won the Premier League up against Chelsea who were out here spending billions. With 77 points, unfortunately they couldn't take home the Community Shields. However, a nice cheeky domestic double which means the treble is on the line tonight. Winning in the FA Cup final at Wembley against Newcastle 3-2. Now just realise the UEFA Super Cup saw the Europa League winners Leon win against that stacked Juventus team. It's all going down at Tottenham's home stadium. Benfica of the likes of Eusebio in their starting lineup. Everyone else I don't really recognise. However, Torres is out suspended. No need to worry as a 91 rated Kevin Keegan can replace him. This is just unfair. They just have so many club legends and heroes returning to their roster. It's just a star studded roster that should take care of Benfica quite comfortably. So let's quick sim it. Oh wow, 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 wow. What is this Benfica team? The Eusebio show as he scores a double and takes the most of their chances. Scores a 10 out of 10 match rating. The Liverpool legends have flopped on the big stage. After Ian Rush scored you 39 goals, the Ballon d'Or contender was in fine form and Steve Highway with 50 goal contributions. Fernando Torres was out here balling. Maybe that was the missing link in the final. Suspended when they needed him most in that classic Carlsberg sponsor, the retro kit. What about Eusebio though? The 94 rated Portuguese centre forward. I'm surprised he hasn't been nominated for the Ballon d'Or yet, but he is single-handedly won Benfica the Champions League, broken their European curse, and currently has a market value of 181.5 mil. We check in on some other European competitions with the Europa League. PSV had doubled up in this video. That's the second time they've won the Europa in a 2-1 win over Besitgas. And the Conference League has shown us that RB Leipzig beat out Spartak Moskva 3-2 in the final. Before we get to the World Cup though, it's good to take a glance at the rest of the world. And I love to see it. I love a little mix-up of French champions as Lyon now finish on top with 83 points. Marseille knocked off their perch only by two and PSG in third. Bayern Munich is starting to be found out. They're losing their magic spark as Leverkusen overtake them again for the Bundesliga title. Dortmund still yet to win the league. Over in Italy, it was Milan to become Serie A champions again, defending their crown as Inter, Juve and Fiorentina finish in the top four. The Spanish title was indeed won by Barcelona again. They come through in first. They have 89 points to their name. Real Madrid, they're always in the conversation. Now it's time
time for the nations to go to battle in the 2026 World Cup. Russia have qualified, FIFA have lifted their ban alongside Ireland, Japan and Italy in Group A. Group B sees Spain, Denmark, Slovenia and Mexico. Serbia, Wales, Hungary and Netherlands make up Group C. Drawn into Group D is Brazil, Croatia, Morocco, Scotland, Germany, Austria, Ghana, United States in Group E. England matched up against Belgium, South Korea and Sweden. And the last two include France, Czech Republic, Uruguay, Romania and in Group H it's Lionel Messi versus Ronaldo with Argentina taking on Portugal, Turkey and the Ukraine. I might get cancelled for this one but imagine a Russia-Ukraine World Cup final. That would break the internet. Ireland and Italy make it out of Group A. Group B see Spain and Denmark progress. Wales and the Netherlands come through out of Group C. Brazil and now Scotland make the round of 16 as Austria and Germany both knock out Ghana and the host country United States. Belgium and England are successful in Group F. Group G sees the Czech Republic and France make it out as Messi takes another W over Ronaldo, getting the best of Portugal, knocking them out, sending them home with Argentina and Ukraine progressing out of Group H in the round of 16. We have England knocked out. The Czech Republic were defeated by the Ukraine. Wales took on Scotland in a UK derby over in the quarterfinals. Ireland progressed past Wales. We had Spain beating Brazil and Germany taking down France both 2-1 in the semi-finals. Ireland defeat Austria and Spain knock out the Euro 2024 champions Germany 3-2 and now in the World Cup final the biggest game of this simulation so far in 2026 it's an all European affair with the Republic of Ireland taking on 2010 champion Spain. Here's how the Irish are lining up and they have a 5 star nation 87 defense, 87 mid and 86 rated attack with their best player being a 91 rated Hutton at left back. Is this going to be enough to get the better of an elite Spanish squad? Casillas Puyol, Ramos the captain and Pedri and Javi in midfield. It's a true David versus Goliath situation. So let's see it play out here. And it's Ireland with a 3-2 win. No. Highway might have lost the Champions League final, but he's made up for it here, scoring the winner. Fernando Torres got a double to help the Irish to their first ever World Cup victory in 2026. That is something that has caught me way off guard. Like the Netherlands, where were they? Now the Irish are on top of the world, as it kind of reminds me of like 2004 Greece, 2016 Portugal, with the player of the tournament being Spain's Butragueno. I'm sure he wasn't happy after receiving that award. The main protagonists of this green machine were in fact Lee Highway who scored the winner five goals and two assists arguably the best player of the tournament three goals for Gallagher who is again the black and white legend I got no idea who he is but I'm sure you Irish are going mad down in the comments below Robbie King got two goals in three games and Johnny Giles with two goals and an assist better luck next time Spain as the player of the tournament Butragueno with four goals and two assists the Real Madrid legend and Fernando Torres who bagged one in the big dance but it wasn't enough five goals and two assists. Unbelievable stuff here as these guys have written their name into Irish folklore but as Roy Keane would say it's it's just their job. A cheeky little fun fact is that they become the first nation not only to win the actual World Cup, but also the Quidditch World Cup. Ronaldinho making the switch to Bayern Munich as they bought him out for £233.3 million. That has got to be up there with one of the biggest purchases we've ever seen as Barcelona have sold not only him, but Rivaldo to Inter. Two Brazilians out the door for £200 million. Hugo Sanchez, the famous Mexican, he will be departing to Tottenham to never win a trophy for £192.5 million pounds. The OG Luis Suarez, the Spaniard centre midfielder, to Atletico Madrid for 189 million as Andrei Shevchenko. He signs for Man City for 184.6 million. Patrick Vieira moves again, this time choosing Roma for 183.9. And the deals keep on coming with Clarence Sadoff making the switch to the Premier League. Aston Villa splashing out for 155 million. Veron has been sold to Arsenal, a perfect Patrick Vieira replacement. And let's just scroll down to the least expensive transfer. This list just is absolutely incredible. The names on here are amazing. Fresh off winning the World Cup with Ireland, it's Dennis Irwin. For £88 million, he joins the bees in Brentford. Now, 2026 Ballon d'Or nominees have been revealed with the top contenders being Rivaldo at Inter. Ian Rush is in there again. Van Basten wants to double up and go back to back. And for the first time, it's Deutschkov at Barca. Do we have time for a fourth different Ballon d'Or winner? And we do. It is the Bulgarian. But it's still Stoichkov. 
Boich Kovu runs it back just like in 1994. He has returned and won the Ballon d'Or in the modern era. What a legend. The Bulgarian streets will never forget. I love it now. All these obscure nations like your Irish, your Bulgarians are coming out the woodwork. And it's just proving that anyone has the chance to become the player of the year. You love to see it and I'm happy to announce the return of the manager of the year award. It's crept up on us. Now it's another Dutch mastermind, Frank Rijkaard, to take home the prize. In this new multiverse and retro roster, he is not only a player, but a manager as well. Being a 92 rated CDM at Milan. Get you a man that can do both. All the awards now are out for grabs as the UEFA team of the year have been announced and Messi he hasn't played a part in the Ballon d'Or but he's come through as a major player of this team of the year including Ronaldinho, Gerrard at Liverpool, Maldini in the back line, Valdez at Barca. Let's take a look at some of the biggest signings of the winter and that includes Bobby Charlton. Part of the Holy Trinity, the United legend must have just been sick of not winning silverware so he's departed to Milan for 209.9 million pounds. We've got Frank Lampard. He's ditched Chelsea for Barcelona. Again, another comfortable 200 million pound signing there. Carlos Puyol has left his boyhood club Barcelona as the Bianconeri have paid up 183.4 million pounds. Roberto Carlos has moved to Manchester United, a great addition at left back. There are also three things certain in life. Death, taxes, and Chelsea spending billions every transfer window. As Matthias Sammer joins the Blue Brigade for 147.8 million pounds from Dortmund, Gary Neville, the banker, moves over to West Ham for 131.9. And are sometimes are maybe good, sometimes are maybe shit. I guess Gattuso is the perfect fit for Tottenham then. Somehow Benfica could beat a prime Liverpool outfit, but can't take the W against PSV, the Europa League winners in the UEFA Super Cup. Liverpool went from losing the Champions League final to being knocked out altogether the next season, finishing third in Group D. And some things always stay the same. Arsenal finishing rock bottom of their group. Over in the semi-finals, it was Bayern to get the best of Man City 3-1 on aggregate and in an El Clasico semi-finals matchup, Stoichkov's Barcelona progressed past Real to make it a mouth-watering super final. The Bavarians in a blockbuster versus the Catalans. Before we watch it play out, we've got to touch base with some of the other competitions as Roma have defeated the Europa League specialists in a penalty shootout, Sevilla, with Agjure from France winning the Conference League over RB Leipzig. And it's Manchester United finally, after doing a bit of a clear out of the club, they've sold a couple of legends and they've won the league by one point in a four-horse title race. Game down all the way to the last day and Liverpool, Chelsea, Man City were all in the hunt. Sad to see that famous Arsenal Invincible squad never really have a sniff. Tottenham down in seventh. Ligue 1 saw Lyon retain the title, defending it successfully from PSG going back to back. And the Bundesliga, of course, it's Bayern Munich toppling the competition. And Serie A sees new champions as Juventus come through with 84 points. Into spending all that money on new players, 200 million plus and finishing in fifth. And last but certainly not least, it's Spain as Barca have pretty much focused and put all their eggs into one basket, losing focus domestically and giving up their title to Real Madrid. Coming through as runners up, but it doesn't matter because they've got a Champions League final to attend to. And you can see why Stoichkov took home the golden ball. Messi hasn't had a sniff, with the now young Argentine failing to compare to the ballers of old as the Bulgarian has hit 47 goals, 14 assists, 60 goal contributions in 53 appearances, still with a game to go. We're gonna let it play out. CPU versus CPU in the big dance. I don't want any intervention. Oh, look how many retro kits there are to select. And Bayern, we've got an outrageously drippy selection to choose from as well. Nevertheless, serious out Bayern Munich will be lining up. Still got Gerd Muller in up front. The Ballon d'Or winner from season one. Theus and Balak are a rock solid combo in midfield. Beckenbauer and Hierro at the back. Maluda and Beckham on the wings. It's literally a football giant versus football colossus in tonight's duel. I can't pick this. It could really go either way tonight. Bayern have just completely bantered Barca in recent years, but this time it's different. Both with Ballon d'Or winners in their teams, both stacked with world-class generational talent, and it's about to go down. And it's like I've got access to EAFC early. This is like the spectate mode. I've got no control over what's going on. It's CPU versus CPU. I'm just sitting here chilling. It's the AI versus AI, and Jerd Muller's in already, and it's already 1-0. A cool, calm, and collected finish, and the Germans have passed through Barca's defense like it wasn't even there. And there's nothing you can do about that, Victor Valdez. Louis van Gaal going absolutely mental on the sideline. And that's his seventh goal of the competition. My goat. He's out for revenge now that Messi's broken his goals in a calendar year record. Now Barcelona making their attack
attacks of their own. Messi coming through and he's forward and what a save from Oliver Kahn one on one. That was a certain goal. It takes a lot to save a Messi left foot finesse shot but he's done it. Luis Suarez puts through Deco. And it's a nice little cross inside Stoichkov. They've kicked off their pre-game nerves and are starting to play some decent football here. It's classic Barca, Guardiola, Tiki Taka, and Suarez plays through Samuel Eto for the equaliser. You've got to say that was coming with the type of passes that were stringing together. A world-class finish. And Barca are back in the game. Bionic finds Jörd Mulo wants to pop one from long range. That's how confident he is tonight. And the German sharpshooter is just an absolute menace. From the set piece, it's Lothar Matthäus to get in at the near post. And the German heads home. Bayern are back in the lead. And the fans can't believe it. Golden delivery from David Beckham. And he out jumps Messi at the back stick. Some substitutions from Barca. Okay, Frank Lampard off for Guardiola. And nothing comes from the court. Corner, but it's out to Samuel Eto for the second and Oliver Kahn is a man on a mission tonight and Stoichkov back inside to Deco a nice little one too and the Ballon d'Or winner fluffs his lines loses possession there that was careless from the Uruguayan and Jörd Muller now Bayern with a substitution of their own bringing on Roberto Carlos for Joshua Kimmich another substitution here from Bayern Florent Maluda coming off for Ronaldinho, how wasn't he starting? Back on over to Messi, you can find Stoichkov, and now's his moment, but Oliver Kahn needs to be drug tested. Stoichkov, lovely ball roll to get past his defender. Now Messi in the clear, one on one, and that might be the goal to send it into extra time. And who else but Leo to fire at home? Just when you thought they were down and out, Barca have come through to make it 2 2. Don't tell me, oh. Don't tell me, don't tell me. Jerd Muller might have the final say. And it's not going into extra time now because Muller's got his second. Barcelona defense just went to sleep. Caught lacking Abidal with the poor clearance. He's been clinical beyond belief and scored the first. He scored the last to put it to bed. And if that doesn't solidify him as a Ballon d'Or champion, I don't know what will. And in dramatic fashion, in a five goal thriller, the Munich club get it done and win another Champions League duke out with Barca. Nevertheless, we're gonna wrap it up there that has been the best retro teams with the best icons and legends from years and eras gone by in the current day the modern era has treated them well because Bayern have gone on to lift their ninth Champions League title the CPU did what they needed to do and let me know down in the comments below do you want to see more of this mod do you want to see more PC mod experiments before EAFC drops let me know down below if you went on to enjoy the career simulation style with the face cam and all make sure to drop the video a like hit subscribe turn on the notifications all that good stuff we're on the road to 150k subs so it'll mean the world to me if we get there make sure to hit up all my socials the links are down in the description below as always i've been your boy so bchd have a great day take care and i'll catch you all in the very next video